guys, Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. I hope we find you all doing well. If not, send us some positive vibes your way if you need them. Today, the last 15 champions that I have maxed out on my account. Now, I used to do videos like this all the time here on the channel. Uh, I've kind of, I don't know why, but I've kind of stopped. Let me know if you want me to bring them back every so often, right? Obviously, this only works every couple of months because I don't max out that many champions. Uh, but epics, uh, rares, and legendaries, we can kind of do three videos every few months kind of looking in hindsight at champions that I have invested in because you guys know how it is the shiny new toy phenomenon where you get a champion you're like I could use this champion everywhere game changer and then in practicality sometimes it's just not the way sometimes a month later a few weeks later even maybe even a few days later you find yourself really you know using this champion in the vault right before we get started does anyone want to get out I think that these these videos, excuse me, can be beneficial, not just for that, but also kind of showing you how I built these champions as well. Uh, so without further ado, this list, the last 15 legendaries that I have maxed, it might show you something, it might say something about power creep in this game, but this could be the best batch of legendaries that I've ever invested in on my account. So there's really not that many duds here, maybe a couple, but that's about it. So let's just start out with the last, or I shouldn't say not the most recent, but number 15. So about whenever his fusion was or whatever, Gaius Sakleefa, was he a fusion or fragment summon? I always forget. Either way, Gaius is amazing. I think it was a fusion. Please just let me go. However, I don't use him right now. I need to rebuild him, man, because this build like immunity with a bunch of crit rate and a little bit of crit damage, not a lot of attack little bit of accuracy like what am I trying to do here with this you know I don't even know why I have him built this way I want to build him for end game arena for a tag team uh, arena bomb team so that's what I'm going to do so I love Gaius the Gleeful however don't really pay too much attention to how I built this champion. He has the extra turn on the A1. He has an AoE with the sleep on the A2. Also the bomb that detonates after two turns. And on his A3, he will instantly detonate all bombs. Second hit, ignore unkillable. And then Mad Bomber, when attacked, has a 30% chance of placing a bomb debuff on the attacker that detonates after two turns. Occurs once per hit. And then instantly detonates all bomb debuffs on all enemies whenever this champion is killed. So... Gaius Gleeful and Lord Shazar are meta now. They're like, the bombs are a thing in Raid Shadow Legends. It only took them about, what, three, four years, but they made it happen, and I'm actually kind of excited about it, right? I, I really like having something kind of new, even though it's not new, but it's viable now. Uh, so I'm excited overall about bombs. Um, I even went with Eagle Eye, and I still have that low on the, uh, on the accuracy. Jeez. When you try your best, but you don't succeed. Am I, am I supposed to say something? That low for Platinum Arena, I should say. Uh, definitely need to get that up. And I think I can sacrifice... I don't know about you guys. It, it, I think I... The reason I have so much crit rate... I mean, I don't obviously I don't need more than 100. But I did that just to get a little bit of extra damage out of his A1, and especially his A3. But if the first hit is instantly detonating all bombs anyway, then why do we care exactly? And it's going to be ignoring Unkillable anyway. Like, Unkillable, they might have 1 HP. So... Do I even need to build this dude in a crit rate? It's placing sleep here. It's not predicated on a critical hit. Although his damage is all right, you know? So, I don't know. I'll probably still try to shoot for 100% crit rate, but I don't think it's as imperative to load up. What do I have? Crit rate? I must have crit rate on the gauntlets. Yeah, I don't want crit rate on the gauntlets on guys to Gleeful. So, yeah, he is, I would say, A tier. A tier champion in the game. Uh, really just can't say enough good things about guys to Gleeful. Uh, Wither the Crowned. She's also A tier, I would say. Uh, maybe can make an argument that she is S tier. I have her in a curing in a perception set. In curing sets, I I'll tell you guys, 20% bonus heal, that's a, bi a big bonus. That's a big bonus on every heal, especially on a champion that does a lot of healing, like Wither the Crown. An AoE on her A1 with Leech and a continuous heal on a random ally for two turns. Damage based on defense. Okay, so we're already starting with Leeches and heals and an AoE on the A1. On the A2, feel no pain. This is a kit that even if you've read it once, upon rereading, you're just like, dang, man. She's really, really good. Uh, plays increased defense in all allies. Big version, obviously. Three turn cooldown. Also, increases the duration of all continuous heal buffs on all allies and then instantly activates any continuous heal buffs on all allies. That's fantastic. And then on the Azure Redeemer, her A3, another three turn cooldown. Look at these books. Nice and easy. Boom, boom. 
Boom, boom. Thank you very much. A cleanse and a heal by 30% of this champion's max HP. That's insane, man. That's insane. What exactly is going on here? Um, I can explain. That was a rhetorical question. <laughs> and then it gets better. Uh, places a continuous heal on the ally with lowest HP for one turn at the start of each turn. So, I, I mean, she is... I mean, and she's also impaled by this dagger, which is pretty freaky looking. I, I'm not going to lie to you guys. And what's up with those hands, man? You kidding me? Either way, either way. Aesthetically, she might be a little bit freaky, but she can heal your team with the best of them. I would say her, Volgoth. Believe it or not, this guy is not like a great champion, but in, when it comes to raw heals, uh, Operdin clan father or whatever, like he, he can put out some serious heals. Retro Droth, like, these are some of my personal favorite healers in the game. What about you guys? Who would you say is like a top notch healer in your opinion? All right, so I'll give her it an A tier. You can make the case S tier on Wither the Crown. Uh, you can make the case with S tier on Archbishop Pinthroy. You guys know I've been saying it like every video now. Uh, that I've done covering this champion or even, you know, even glancing on this champion. I've been telling you guys, I haven't been shy in how much I love Archbishop Pinthroy. I really, I, I really love this. He might be one of my favorites here. I have, let's see, one, I think I only have two champions, one or two that I like more than him. I built him in Relentless Gear, right? So I like extra turns, especially when a champion has it. Let's start with his A3. So on the A3, heals all allies by 30% of their max HP, then plays the increased defense for two turns. If four more allies are alive, which normally is the case, uh, also will place a shield buff on each ally for two turns equal to 30% of their max HP. So we get increased defense, we get a great heal, and we get a shield uh, provided four or more allies are alive. Again, the downside is four turns, but the Relentless helps kind of crank that down a little bit. This guy on Splendor removes all decreased defense and weakens from this champion at the start of each turn. And then on the Holy Word, his A2 ability, we get increased accuracy on all allies. This is on a three turn cooldown. Increased accuracy, we attack all enemies, AOE attack, we get heal reduction debuff on all enemies for two turns. Then we have block buffs on all enemies for two turns. I mean, that's that's insane. That's a really, really good ability. Increase accuracy, uh, then AoE attack, heal reduction, and block buffs. It's, it's very unique. You've never seen these three abilities together all in an AoE, especially not on a three-turn cooldown. And then we have transfers a random debuff from this champion to the target. 75% chance of stealing a random buff from the target as well. That's a great A1 ability uh, to boot. I, I just, I mean, accuracy and all battles by 52 I don't know, man. He's just like, something about his kit really does it for me. So you can see I went with War Master, went with your Master Hexer and Lasting Gifts to extend the duration or have a chance of extending the duration of his buffs and his debuffs. This guy can do it all. Uh, block buffs is so important right now, especially uh, for Hydra Clan boss. All right, here we have Shogger. Shogger is a really cool champion because, uh, or a cool story, I guess. I really underrated Shogger. I was excited when I pulled him, you know, some of that was maybe a little bit for the video. I don't know. Maybe one has, one or two people in the comments have told me that maybe I overreact a little bit on shard opening videos. Oh, there it is! Yay! Even better! You're just jealous. Even better than Chris. Not better than Chris, but since I already have Chris, you know what I'm saying? Man, this dude, he impressed the hell out of me. I use him now in uh, on one of my Hydra Clan boss teams as my debuffer. But also, he's got that really unique kind of Draco Morph blend of being a debuffer and a really strong damage dealer as well. In fact, he out damages Draco Morph for me in the two builds that I have them on. I have Draco Morph on, I guess his stats are not quite as good. Uh, well, he has way more attack. I think their stats are actually pretty similar. Uh, but anyway, let's take a look at this kit here first. Stupor is A1. We have a 75% chance win book to placing a sleep debuff for one turn. On the A2, Venom Storm. Check this out. Attacks all enemies two times on a three-turn cooldown. First hit, 100% chance poison for four turns. Second hit, 100% when booked again. Decreased defense for three turns on a three-turn cooldown. So he's got the three-turn decreased defense, the four-turn poison all on a three-turn cooldown. That's pretty insane. Heartstopper ability. Attacks one enemy, then attacks one time at random. If the target is under a poison, it will ignore shield block damage and unkillable. Grants an extra turn if the attack kills an enemy. Also resets the cooldown of the Venom Storm by two turns if it kills two enemies. 
nice to have the, the kill part, but Heartstopper really is not the highlight of his kit for me. It deals decent damage, that's about it. But really, it's constant agony mixed with his Venom Storm that makes this champion so special. He has a heart hitting A1, and in constant agony, instantly attacks enemies with a default skill whenever they receive damage from poison debuffs placed by this champion. When hitting champ enemies under poison uh, debuffs, heals this champion by 10% of the damage inflicted. I mean, that's amazing. He's always coming in with his A1 and, you know, just dealing extra damage every single time that poison tick goes off on any enemy. So he's just really a damage dealing machine. He has attack in all battles by 33%. And right now I only use him in Lizard Man and Faction Wars and in Hydra Clan Boss. But for me, that's, that's enough to justify building a champion right now. Uh, yeah, I really, really, really love Shogger. And again, at first I didn't really use him much. But then I had like a, a more healthy appreciation for how much damage and just how great this A2 uh, Venom Storm ability really, really is. All right, so Yumeko is insanely good, right? Insanely good. I mentioned this on the channel before, guys, but I mean, the first thing that I looked at when I pulled Yumeko and I was so lucky enough to pull her was the Dance of Time. Decrease the cooldown of all ally skills by three turns. Increase the cooldown of all enemy skills by three turns. It's the Kaimar mixed with uh, a little bit of Warlord. Obviously, it's only three turns, but still, it's an insanely good ability on Dance of Time on a five-turn cooldown, okay? So, just great. It, it, the, the three turns is enough to activate Seer or activate Erinoril, Elinoril. Uh, poison, Combust, whatever you're trying to do, three turns is usually enough. Uh, I do prefer Warlord still in the arena, personally, but, I mean, Yumeko everywhere else. The cool thing that I didn't recognize about her, though, she has deep cover of Perk Veil uh, at the start of each round for two turns. Uh, she's immune to all debuffs while she's under a Veil or Perk Veil. Great passive. She has Turn Meter Steel on the A1. Fantastic. But really, this Destiny's Mirror... And I mentioned this, like I said before on the channel, but this is like, I didn't know, I didn't put two and two together, that she could use this against Bommel and make Bommel, she's like the Bommel cheat code now for me, right? You go in there, you place a hex on Bommel, it's gonna have a, whenever an enemy tries to place a debuff on this champion or an ally, has a 55, 30 against bosses, transferring those debuffs to a random enemy under hex debuff placed by this champion happens right before the debuffs are placed on the initial target. So essentially all those bombs, instead of having like four or five or six bombs on whatever it is on all of your champions, it's gonna be on Bommel. A lot of those bombs are gonna be on Bommel instead. And keep in mind, Bommel takes more damage from bombs. So it's great. Uh, yeah, Yumeko is fantastic. I use her now on, in place of Kaimar. Uh, to help control if I need to use Dance of Time to reset the enemy skills as well. Uh, so I use her instead of Kaimar on my Seer kind of uh, Doom Tower, just regular floor teams. Uh, I also use her in a couple speed runs. I use her here and there in the arena on, our off on, a, on a speed team. And I use her... Who the hell is this bit? On Bomber. Okay. Total stats on her. 287. We built her really fast. 287 speed in 669 on the accuracy. Uh, so, yeah, I'm happy with this build overall. Uh, she's not super tanky, but I don't need her to be. Uh, I mean, 3k and, and 50k almost is, is well enough for me. I'd rather have her really fast. And you'll see that is a theme here on how I like to build my support champions. You see it here with Mithrala as well. And Mithrala is next on the list. I mean, Mithrala Lifebane, she's, she's also, and I told you guys before we started this video, these are some of my favorite champions I've ever built. A lot of these, right? Uh, and Mithral Lightbane is certainly no exception to the rule there. So, uh, Poisons on the A1. She has an AoE Hex with increased defense, decreased defense on the three turn cooldown on the A2. And then A3, we have a Cleanse, we have a Strength, and we have a Shield. I mean, sorry, Penthroy, but I think Mithrala has you, man. I mean, they're different. They're very unique, and the A2s are very different, but one of the better Hex landers out there and Hex now with the extra damage when the Hex got its buff is fantastic. Increased defense and attack on a three-turn cooldown with the AoE attack and Hex, man, that, that's fantastic. And then Gaze of Stone synergizes so well with it, putting petrification uh, on the attacker every time an ally is attacked or she's attacked from somebody under a Hex. Uh, just great kit overall. I use her currently in Tag Team Arena on one of my main three teams, and I use her on, uh, she's like, she's an arena goddess, man. Everybody's using her in the arena right now because of the passive, right? I use a Hydra Clan boss too. Uh, 
also increases the champion's resistance. The amount is equal to her accuracy. So essentially, you guys will all get Mithrala Light Bane eventually from Hydra Clan boss. But you just build her with a lot of accuracy. And I mean, check this out, man. She has 720. She has 870 accuracy or resistance excuse me because her resistance equals her resist plus her accuracy so no one's touching her in the arena right which is the beauty of this champion in the arena uh you can come in here you can use her out of immunity just put her in triple perception like i did and then you can come in and cleanse your allies anyway because she's not going to be touched right she's not going to be controlled so i love i love mithrala all right next up is going to be a champion i don't love as much as all these other beast mode void legendaries it's deliana now no shade at deliana i made a few videos about deliana and i have to say on my free to play account she's tremendous but she's more, in my mind, she's a little bit more of a progression as opposed to a late game, end game champion that, you know, players who have been playing for years and years are going to be spending a lot of time using. I think I use her still maybe in Faction Wars. Uh, she has the AoE Leech on the A1. She has a decreased resistance uh, with a block buffs and a debuff spread on the A2. And then on Know Your Place, it's in a four turn cooldown with block buffs on each enemy for two turns with a heal there as well. So not a bad champion, right? Like, I think she's a great addition to the game especially if she's free right so i don't use her just because i have better options you know and that's what it's all about i mean every account's different every champion's different uh so no shade throwing out deliana i love that she's force affinity too uh she's a strong champion but i would say she's you know i guess b tier b tier Maybe C plus if I was being mean, maybe B plus if I was being kind. Uh, how do you feel about Deliana? Do you guys use her a lot? Let me know. I have her here built in the same build that I did the video on her initially with a stun set for a little bit extra control. Uh, but if I had to re-gear her, I think I would probably go, I would take her out of control, build her for a little bit more damage try to get some damage and support out of this champion. I don't know. Uh, let me know how you use Deliana if you guys are a big fan of her. Uh, again, I don't think she's a trash champion, but I just don't use her on my account, frankly, you know? Uh, I don't, and I, I told her, I told you guys that I use her in High Elves. I don't use her in High Elves in Faction Wars. Did I say that? If I did, I was lying. I was bold-faced lying. You must think that I'm new to this. I don't use her because now at Faction Wars, for me right now, I'm just trying to optimize my speed of my runs, and she's not going to help me uh, go any faster. Next up is going to be, he's the second to last oldest champion that I've invested in, Beauregard the Elder. Uh, but man, I actually like Beauregard, guys. I really like this champion. So I have him built with a lot of resist. I, I run him on my main Bommel team alongside Yumeko, right? Uh, I have him really fast as well. So uh, a lot of HP, really fast, a lot of resist, hence the, uh, the power. He has increased defense on the ally with lowest HP on his A1. On the A2, we remove one random debuff from all allies and place a shield buff on all allies with two turns, 20% of this champion's max HP. After looking at champions like Mithrala, like super underwhelming, right? Comparatively. However, still not an awful ability. I would love the full cleanse, but we get one random debuff and shield, okay? Rune of Energy though. We have increased resistance and increased speed on a four turn cooldown. So obviously we love this on a three turn cooldown, but increased resistance and increased speed, it makes him perfect to help me out for Bommel to make sure that we're always resisting all of those bombs uh, or that they're getting deflected by Yumeko. So uh, I, I like this. It's not a, a game changingly good kit. I would say he's B tier, you know, champion, but he does have his use cases. Allies receive 10% less damage from champions whose resistance is lower to or equal to theirs as well so nice kind of passive damage mitigation there i did go down and pick up uh pick up the resist on the defense tree along with support on Boragar the elder so he's just mainly built right now super fast to get a bunch of shields and as many increased speeds and increased resistance out as possible on the team i'm higher on this guy than i feel like most people are but that being said i'm not saying he's like the best champion in the world uh next up is going to be mother cyborg i said earlier in the video that she that i have another a couple favorites she's one of them uh, i didn't fuse her i pulled her recently so i'm new to the mother cyborg game and i remember back in the day when there was her fusion i remember a lot of players kind of being skeptical on this champion yeah she's all right she's all right i i love her i think she's one of the better champions out there and maybe she's my most recent champion too so maybe this is that recency bias i just want to be transparent and honest with you guys however 
Dude, she's so good. I use her in Hydra Clan Boss on my best Hydra Clan Boss team. Uh, I use her on, I cleared, let me, let me show you the team that I used her on, on Hydra Clan Boss. Look at me now. Look at me now. Yeah, what am I doing? What am I doing? Just trying to humble brag my uh, my great haul apparently guys. So my clan actually just killed a uh, brutal Hydra clan boss for the first time uh, this week. So congrats to my clan. I love you guys. You're great. Uh, I use all three of my keys here and look at that. Look at that mother Cybel on my best team there. This is on brutal difficulty. Not too bad. Uh, I use her. Inquisitor Shamil, Ugo, Norog, uh, I Geomancer, and Rio Bone Spear was a late addition to that squad that really, you know, it, it took it next level. It took it next level. The reason being is because I did I was lacking heals on this team and I have no reviver on this team. So if anybody dies, I'm screwed. But let's take it all the way back to Mother Cybel here, right? She has that revive on death that's up almost all the time because I built her super, super fast. So I guess in a way, she's my reviver on the team. But she also dealt a lot of damage herself. I want to say she put out around 6 million damage on that particular run just off of these AoEs on her A1. And this is what I love about her as well. Like I love so much about this champion, but I love that she has an AoE with decreased speed. 50% uh, chance of landing on her A1 ability. That allows me to keep decreased speed up basically against all the Hydra heads all the time, which is great. Uh, we have Revive on Death and Increased Defense on a three-turn cooldown. As I said, look at how fast I built her, guys. 308. I just, I loaded her up with speed. I would like 100% crit rate though, so I might have to go in there and tweak around a little bit because I'm using so much of that A1 and a little bit more accuracy, but surprisingly, She's still doing a lot of damage, and she's still landing uh, decreased speed. She's not getting resisted, even with, I, I imagine, against Spirit Affinity, she probably will. But, uh, yeah, it's still landing with, even with 229 on the accuracy. Uh, revive on Death, Increased Defense, amazing. It's going to be up almost all the time, kind of, with a 308 speed. On the A3, I use this ability sparingly, sparingly. And the nice thing is about the AI, I mentioned this on a previous video as well, but the AI is not going to go in there and always force feed you this ability. It's only going to use it if it makes sense. You're swapping HP on Mother Cybel with an ally, and then the ally with the lowest HP after the swap gets a block damage, uh, the, uh, uh, and a continuous heal. The ally with the, the, the higher HP, excuse me, I'm stammering my way through this ability. I should have just read it to you guys uh gets an increased speed and a 40 percent turn meter boost okay uh so really cool they both get a turn meter boost as well so it, not a bad ability here and then fully heals the ally with lowest HP whenever this champion is killed. Heals the ally by 25% of their max HP. And fills their turn meter by 15% whenever this champion is revived. Uh, also, I run her as my team lead because she's got the speed or in all battles by 24%. Man, it just keeps getting better with this champion. I went War Master on her. Uh, also, what was I going to say? Oh, speed. Base speed of 115, man. One of the fastest champions in the game. A lot of defense, too. I really... Can you tell? I really, really love her. Uh, if you have Mother Cybel and you're not using her, give her a shot, man! Ganderfawn, one of my more recent pulls. Very, very happy when I pulled this champion. He's a beast. Uh, currently, I use him in Demon Spawn Faction Wars, and I use him on one of my tag team arena teams. Or when I say tag team arena teams, it's really one of my three main arena teams. Uh, so what I tried to do, you know, maybe about a year ago or so, I kind of took a deep breath. I carved out an hour or two in my schedule, and I really tried to look at all my champions and come up with the best three teams I could possibly put together for tag team, and also to kind of rotate depending on what I need to face in the regular arena, and Canterfawn did make the cut on one of those squads, so I'm really, really happy, I, happy excuse me, I use him in lethal and crit damage on his gear sets. We have him with a uh, crit rate, a lot of crit damage, obviously, could definitely stand to have higher on the speed and the attack here. I didn't really he was this slow at 157 speed but i do have him going on a go second team in the arena so i imagine that's why i actually have him paired with mithrala uh lifebane with duchess and with warlord so it's a it's a kind of a tanky team uh so it doesn't matter so much we have helm smasher uh because of the arena usage and uh yeah that's candorfon i think he is a s tier nuker certainly in the game i think i personally think that mother cybel is s tier as well you can hate on me if you want i don't care what you say uh sigmund the high shield dude this guy is another guy who impressed the hell out of me 
I really, I didn't go for him either. He was a fusion too. I didn't go for him. Apparently I need to go for every fusion, which I, I plan on doing from here on out, by the way. I went for Helicath, thank God. And he'll be coming up in a second year. So I have Sigmund with a lot of HP, a lot of defense, a lot of speed. Not a lot compared to like Mother Cybel, but a, a decent amount, right? Uh, a little bit of crit rate, a little bit of crit damage, a little bit of accuracy. Let's see what's in his kit. So on his A1, he removes any shield buffs. Also has a 75% chance of removing one random buff. Also has a 100% chance when attacking against bosses. Not a bad A1. On the battlefield beacon, his A2 ability hits all enemies two times. First hit, provoke. 75% chance. Second hit, decrease attack. 100% chance. On a three turn cooldown, that's not a bad ability at all. But then the shield of the realm, man. It's a great ability too. This is on a three turn cooldown. We have a shield for two turns on all allies. 30% of this champion's max HP. So you can just load them up with a lot of HP. Make that a nice girthy shield. Uh, and then have strength in the big version on all allies for two turns. So many champions like Mother Cybel, for example, have increased defense or like Mithrala, but they don't have strength in two, right? Only one champion has both of those abilities on a three turn cooldown. Who is it? Everybody say it together. World of Frost King. Uh, but it's so nice to have that. The three, the shield and the strength on a three turn cooldown. I just think this champion's great. Whenever the champion is attacked, has 20% chance of decreasing the duration of all buffs on the attacker by one turn. 40% instead when attacked by a boss. Allied defense and Doom Tower battles by 40%. Went War Master on this champion. But yeah, man, Sigmund is a really, really solid champion. Uh, Basatha, call me crazy. But I'm not a massive fan of Basatha. So first of all, Basatha looks really cool. Kind of got the, the Draco mixed with Tatura Rhymehide, uh, but with blue lightning or purple lightning, I guess, uh, shining through him. Very cool looking champion. He's a Doom Tower secret room, hard secret room champion that you get. Uh, they're all, not all, that, that's unfair to say. A lot of them, look at his face, man. Jeez, he is mad. He is gross. The thing with him is though, his kit, looks amazing but then it's one of those kits that looks amazing you ever have a champion like this but then in practicality i i don't use him anywhere i don't know uh death roll attack uh, decrease attack on the a2 we have a strengthen and continuous heal on all allies for two turns also plays a shield for two turns on this champion uh 25 percent uh, no, no, no. also plays a shield for two turns equal to 25 percent of the champion's max hp on allies under fear true fear provoke blah blah, blah uh, under cc debuffs so we have strengthened and continuous heal and a potential shield if they're being CC'd. More often than not, no one's being CC'd on my teams. Uh, so it's a strengthened and continuous heal, which is not a bad ability on a three turn cooldown. On the A3, we have an AoE, 100% stun on a four turn cooldown and decreased turn meter by 30%. Okay, so you might say, wow, Ash, this is a great kit. Keep in mind, you have to be playing the game for a long time to be able to clear enough Doom Tower hard secret rooms to unlock this champion. The champions that you need to unlock this champion, unless we're talking like five years from now, like, they're better than this champion, in my opinion. The AoE stun is nice, but keep in mind, now we have Astralon who has an AoE stun, we have Basilius Ronus who has an AoE stun, they just added a new champion to the game, I forgot his name, with AoE stun. Uh, AoE guaranteed stuns? Eh, they're nice now. But where am I going to be using this that it's so important? Nowhere, really, you know? Not good multipliers, not a lot of damage out of this HP-based champion. Uh, but then he has a very, very cool pass. Whenever an enemy is revived, has a 100% chance of placing a stun debuff on them for one turn, and it cannot be resisted or blocked. Pretty cool, maybe for the arena or something like that. However, you know, again, I'm comparing him to another amazing champion. But like Lydia the Death Siren, give me Lydia over Basatha, right? And instead of the AoE stun, give me a champion like Warlord. Now, I know not everybody has all these champions, but if you're looking for, I don't know. I just, I guess you could use him in the arena if you didn't have Lydia or, yeah, I guess. But this only happens, one, like if it's an AoE revive, only one enemy is, is stunned. Not everybody, right? So that does mitigate the usefulness somewhat. Overall, I don't think he's a trap. Deny. Just give me a reason, just a little bit. I haven't even masteried him out. That's that's pretty poor form to be judging a champion. I haven't even put masteries on yet. I did play with him quite a bit though. I'll say he's B tier. I think that, you know, he's a good champion. Don't get me wrong. It's just he's not good and I, I feel this way, you guys know by now. I feel this way about all the Doom Tower champions, man. Uh Doom Tower hard.
Uh, except for Uros, the, the Soul Cage, and maybe Thea, the Tomb Angel now. I think that she's actually pretty solid with the Hex. Uh, but most of those champions are just just missing something, you know? Anyway, Norog is next, guys. Three champions left. Norog, the pig! I love Norog the pig. You can see that I used him on my my number one team as well. I put him in Guardian, where it absorbs 10% of all the damage dealt to allied champions. Heals by 10% every turn. Damage absorbed is not reduced by defense. That's raw damage coming at them. Uh, so, 10% of all damage dealt to all uh, champions, allied champions, so 10% damage mitigation built in. And then, on his thick skin passive, he's immune to stun freeze sleep C uh, debuffs, decrease the damage taken by all allies that are under one or more buffs by 15%, decrease the damage taken by all allies that are under no buffs by 25%. So add that to the Guardian, this dude is a walking damage mitigator. We get 10% there, we get another t up to 25% damage mitigation there. And then on the, uh, I could have even gotten more if I went down to the, uh, but, 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 but there it is, Bulwark. Uh, decreases the damage all out received by 5%. This champion received that damage instead. I wanted to go with the offense Warmaster instead because I do want some extra damage. I am using him in a Hydra. But I also want a, self a selfless defender, excuse me, decreases the damage an ally receives from the first enemy hit in each round by 20%. This champion received that damage instead. Obviously not going to be super useful in a longer battle like Hydra, but can be effective in shorter battles uh, when delay death. I just really like the defense tree, obviously, on this champion. I really like Norog, man. Block Actus Skills on the A1, okay. And AoE block buffs is why I really used him. That and all the damage mitigation are why I put him into that Hydra Clan boss team. And he dealt a decent amount of damage. Not as much as Mother Cybel, but I want to say around 3 or 4 million damage, if I'm not mistaken, on that run that I showed you earlier. So, not bad. Not bad damage at all. Uh, and block buffs is a quintessential debuff to have for Hydra Clan boss. Aura, defense, and dungeons by 40%. Man, oh man, oh man, what a beast. Uh, so yeah, absolutely love Norog. I built him fast. I built him with 100% crit rate, a little bit of crit damage, a little bit of defense. Perfect. Uh, his accuracy could be a little bit higher, but it does get the job done uh, where I'm using him right now. All right, next up is going to be the man, the myth, the legend is Helikoth. I think that Norog is an A tier champion, by the way. I think the Helikoth is an S tier champion. So good. Now, I need to go in here and probably rebuild Helicath, guys. Actually, not definitely rebuild Helicath. He's one of the champions I'm really not happy with the build. Uh, I was using him... I, I think I have a a solo something or... What was I soloing with this guy? Uh, I was soloing some Doom Power Tower boss with him. I forget which. I was going to make a video on it. I decided to bail because the, the, the stat th threshold was so insanely high. Or maybe... Maybe I did. I don't... Oh, man, I'm getting old. I'm getting old! Ah! Either way, Helicath is a beast, right? He has a, uh, a, a two-time hitter on his A1, will ignore shield and block damage. He has an AoE with the shield, value the shield based on his defense, a la Valkyrie. Uh, on the A3, a la Rashkod the Tower, he has blocked damage on all allies on a four-turn cooldown, but unlike Rashkod the Tower, he places an increased defense uh, in place of the block damage when it's removed, stolen, or expires. This is a nasty, nasty ability, guys. Really, really good stuff. And then Feast of Agony increases champion's defense by 5% for each ally under block damage buffs. Counterattacks with the default skill whenever an ally is hit while under block damage buff. I mean, that's fantastic. Defense in all battles by 30%. Are you kidding me? I went War Master, went down the uh, defense tree as well. Uh, I'm just so thrilled with this champion. I'm currently using him in Nether Spider on my main team with the Venomage Geomancer combo, which I absolutely love. Let me know if you want to see a video on that. And last but not least, I just put out a, uh, a longer video on Bivald of the Thorn. A lot of you guys, most of you guys, positive feedback on that video. It was basically me sitting down for 45 minutes and building a champion from scratch, essentially, and talking about the thought process. I still have the same gear that I put him on that day, Relentless and Crit Rate. And I think this guy is also, dare I say, S tier, man? Like, am I overranking these, these, uh, these champions? I don't think so. He's really good, really freaking good. Uh, 75k HP, a little bit of defense, a lot of speed and crit rate, crit damage, trying to thread the needle and get a little bit of everything here. Check out this kit, guys. He has a Provoke on his A1, heals the ally lowest HP by 15% of the damage inflicted. Provoke debuff can be placed even if it's a weak hit. That's great. And same thing with the, uh, the A2. These Provokes and Leeches can land on weak hits. 
Fantastic. Three turn cooldown attacks all enemies two times. First hit, 100% provoke. Unlike, you know, uh, Sigmund of the High Shield, 75%. He's got a two hitter on his A2. 100% provoke, 100% leech. Also, strengthen on himself. Leech and provoke again can land on weak hits. On his A3 ability, it's another really good one. Another hard hitting AoE attack, both HP based. Attacks all enemies. Damage increases by 5% for each debuff on each enemy. Also heals all allies by 20% of the damage inflicted. And plays a shield on them for two turns, equal to 20% of the damage inflicted. Hell yeah, he's S tier! Hell yeah, he's S tier, man! Decrease the damage taken by all allies from under provoke by 15%. There he is, guys. I mean, increased ally HP by 28% on the aura. I love him. If you want to see, you know, how I decided on the build that he's in right now, you can check out that video. Perfect time to do so because this video is over. Let me know if you liked me bringing this series back to the channel. And if you did, I'd be happy to come back at you guys with my last 10 or 15 epic and rare champions. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, take care, guys.